I'm Zach George, and this is my wife, Bree. We're training both of our dogs, including our brand new puppy, and showing you everything it actually takes to have the well-trained dogs that you've always wanted. Subscribe to my channel for the most realistic dog training series out there. Watch from the beginning or pick up anywhere. Sometimes when we think of socialization, we think about getting our dogs comfortable with other dogs, but it's much more than that. It's the same size as Veronica. That's a bear print. Zach is not turning around. To properly socialize our dogs, we have to expose them to all kinds of new things while doing our best to avoid negative experiences. Sometimes I have to wonder if we're biting off more than we can chew with our socialization practice. I'm pretty scared. Yeah, you should be. As we're walking through the woods, we come across these very notable and kind of ginormous bear prints. Rather than freaking out, I figured I might as well use Inertia's super nose to see if we can track this bear today, but don't try this at home. Good girl. I'm in a forest where there is known to be at least 600 grizzlies and lots more black bears. So it's kind of scary being here, but at the same time, it's really awesome. And believe it or not, walking through brand new forests and smelling, well, brand new bear prints definitely broadens our dog's experiences. And that means additional socialization. Talk about being on edge though. I have to wonder, is that a bear back there? carrying the bear spray, no safety. While Zach and Inertia were trying to get a close-up experience with a bear, I thought Veronica and I could work on navigating some slightly less deadly new obstacles. She's still young and learning how to use her body and how to be confident Ready? while she does it. You can do it. Good job. These are all really important forms of socialization to practice, so she'll be ready for whatever comes her way later. We haven't found the bear yet, but it's becoming clear that we are completely surrounded by wild animals right now. There's a real live fox spotted by Bree. Nice sighting. You're a beautiful, beautiful animal. Oh, he's on the wall. I got it. And I'm still there, still with him. There are few things more intriguing to our dogs than other mammals. Wow. If we can teach Veronica to be obedient around the continent's largest mammal, then we've got a pretty good shot at teaching her how to process other mammals as well. A couple of them just started peeking over here like, is that a dog? Do I need to charge that truck and destroy it? Bison. That's yeah. normal. A herd of bison is one thing for our dogs to see, and inertia is definitely getting to know this new species pretty well. But check out this wild card. Can you believe this? Oh my god, zoomies. Bison actually get zoomies, just like dogs do. Oh yeah, I think we may have found that bear we were looking for earlier. See the bear, Inertia? At this point, Inertia has seen lots of bears, but they still put her on high alert. I can't blame her for that. Veronica does not even see the bear, but Inertia does, and she is being so good. I know, it's a bear. That's okay, it's good. Good girl. That's a black bear. Be quiet. Good girl. No matter where you live, there are dangers in the world that your dog is bound to encounter at some point. And if you haven't taken the time to responsibly expose them to the world and the things in it, dangerous encounters can end in disaster. That's why socializing our dog is arguably the most important thing we can do with them. Inertia's been watching that bear this whole time. You see and, the bear? And she's being very good. She's very, being... she's very interested, but very good. That's a bear. Other animals are only a small part of what we're choosing to expose our dogs to as we socialize them, though. We stumbled upon some acid pools and geysers shooting out of the earth. I better keep inertia close. Inertia, come heal. A geyser is a column of superheated water that the earth shoots out when too much pressure builds up beneath the surface. We're on top of one of the world's largest super volcanoes right now. And the earth is making that very clear everywhere we walk. These pools right here are full of sulfuric acid, which is highly toxic. There's a sulfury smell in the air. The vast majority of known life cannot even live here, with the exception of these bacteria that have found a way to survive these conditions over billions of years. We call those extremophiles. It's a really great thing that we're not going to be forced to jump into those ponds by a stampeding herd of bison or anything. Suddenly things took a turn. Something intense is really happening over here. We were observing this herd of bison in the distance and then they started coming closer and closer and closer quickly. This whole herd of bison is approaching us rapidly and they started to get so close to us and that's fine. There's still plenty of room to escape, except there's definitely not. 
we don't have anywhere to go if they come on this bridge. Oh my gosh, what if we get trapped with sulfuric acid and bison? We need to get off the bridge. If they come on to this they... boardwalk, we are screwed. We find ourselves trapped on a narrow bridge surrounded by sulfuric acid. Oh gosh, okay, fast developing situation. People are running everywhere. If those bison come up here, we'll either get trampled or we're gonna have to jump into the sulfuric acid water, both of which would probably kill us. Okay, well thankfully we got lucky and those stampeding bison moved along. When we pulled over, Veronica saw some dogs walking by and she started to bark at them in a rather frantic way. Veronica was stressing a little bit. This is a habit I would like to see reduced over time. You see someone's got your attention. Yeah, you see dogs out there. We've talked about Veronica's barking throughout the series, so by now you probably understand that there are many different reasons that dogs bark. And all of these different types of barking are going to be resolved by taking adequate socialization measures. Okay, come on. In other words, lots of desensitizing like this and giving them lots of exposure over time, combined with giving them some intelligent direction. Yeah, go ahead and ask for attention and try and get her to relax. Can yield a pretty well-behaved dog. Can you relax? Wow, such a good job. You can't bypass the elements of time when you're working on things like stopping unwanted barking, but this is what it looks like. Veronica, can you be quiet? Thank you. That's good. Good girl. You're terrific. I've been so proud of the dogs for doing so well in the car when we travel. They're getting really desensitized to it. And we've got to get to Montana and, you know, today. We're going to pretty incredible lengths to socialize Veronica and Mother Nature is not going to make it easy for us to get to our next destination. But at least Veronica will know what it's like to drive on treacherous roads and survive rock slides. That is a rock slide. Look at that. That's a recent. Oh my God. This is a reminder how danger comes in many forms out here. I gotta tell you guys, I definitely was not expecting to get caught in both a blizzard and a rock slide in a single night. Good job, Zach. Thank you for keeping everyone alive. We're not there yet. <laughs> that was nuts. We finally made it to Montana, but it seems the more we travel, the more ominous things are starting to get. There's bones all over this place. Yeah. I'm honestly freaked out right now. This is getting really serious. It seems like everywhere we look, there are animals that have been destroyed by bears or wolves or something. Yeah, you can see, look at that. Large animal, I mean, maybe they were killed, maybe they died naturally, probably an elk. How do you know? Because it's big. You think it's bear bones? I just found this spine. I'm it's out. Just, these are... I just don't want our fossils to join these. You found another one? There are bones everywhere here. Oh boy, that elk is coming towards us. See what I mean? Here's yet another vivid reminder of why our dogs need to not only be aware of the world, but be able to pay attention to us while in that world so that we have the best chance possible at keeping our dogs from escalating any situation they may encounter if we're in the wrong place at the wrong time, which we tend to be flirting with quite often. It's looking right at us. I know. Keep in mind, even though elk aren't predators, they will defend themselves against natural predators like wolves, to whom dogs are closely related. So elk do have some natural instincts to react to provocation from dogs. And let's just say that elk aren't exactly the most skittish animals. It looks like this elk is ready to stand their ground. For the moment, while this elk does seem stable, this is a great opportunity for me to practice with inertia. I'm going to let inertia observe the elk at a safe distance. I hope it's a safe distance and also have inertia practice some of her obedience drills like going into a heel and staying at my side in the face of something that she finds likely very exciting all right yeah i think it's time to quit while we're ahead here and give this elk lots of space now but this won't be my closest encounter with an elk today well, it's finally happened still catching my breath here that was terrifying <laughs> i wasn't filming but this elk was so close to us that's an elk right by my car. I almost got trampled by it. Inertia was off leash. I took Inertia around the corner to put her in the car and there was an elk right there. And I was quickly able to get her back into the camper. But right where he is is where I was attempting the gut. Is she friendly? I'll trample you to death. That thing is a thousand pounds. While elk are generally not going to give you a hard time, if you get too close to one, I really don't want to think about what would happen. And I found myself literally less than six feet away from one. This is exactly the type of scenario that we've been training for. The elk looks stable, but I still have to walk this young lady. I've got to find a way to get out of this camper and keep her from charging that elk. I hope she does a good job. Stay. 
All your training has led to this. <laughs> All of my training has led to this. I'm definitely gonna have her on leash and I'm going to try to quickly make my way away from that elk, hopefully with inertia, not reacting to it. The elk is there. My dog is there. Okay, stay. There's an elk. She's spotted the elk. Between this elk and the one we ran into earlier, the training routine is the same. I let Inertia examine the elk at a safe distance and then practice having her give me her attention and retreat from the elk when asked to. You good, come. Good girl. So she saw the elk. I was able to quickly get her attention on me. I still have to make it a few more feet. There it is over there, looking right at us. Good girl. Inertia. She's making it look easy. Do you know how hard we had to work to be able to get that? Okay, come on. She's more interested in smelling the pee at the uh, little dog park they have here. And just when we got away from that one, we saw another one. This place is teeming with elk. You see the elk? It's over there. See it? Right there? Good girl. Okay, let's go, come on. Well done, good job. All right, so elk aside, I still have a training session that I want to accomplish with Veronica today. It's time for her to learn a really cool trick. I noticed that she's so into the Frisbee that the path of least resistance is teaching it with a toy because she's so into it. Yes, right there. And you can see we're using yes. Remember, yes always means a reward is coming. In this case, Veronica gets to play with her Frisbee for a second. And so that was just a case of her saying, hey, I want to follow that. I want to follow that. And I moved it in a motion that caused her to go into a spin. Here. Yes. Giving it to her upside down as well, because I'm trying to kill two birds with one stone to show her a variety of ways to interact with a Frisbee. Just kind of a secondary thing I'm working on. Yes. Let's just do some tug now without the spin. Just some good old fashioned genuine play to keep the training session optimistic, fun. Using play as a reward like this is one of my favorite ways to train dogs because it's fun for both the human and the dog. And it really helps to strengthen your bond with them at the same time. After all, play is the best way to bond with many dogs. Does she really know spin or is she just following the Frisbee? Of course, she's just following the Frisbee, but we can use that as a starting point. Good, yes. Good. Let's see if I can make the signal maybe more subtle. Watch this. Yes! Did you see how just that motion was a little bit different? It was slightly more purposeful. That's how you start phasing in a more subtle cue once your dog starts to really understand a particular task. And remember, this isn't really about teaching Veronica to spin in a circle. Getting our dog to use their brain in new ways like this is one of the best ways to sharpen their training overall. There's only so much you can do with sit, stay, lie down, and come. Good girl, come on. So teaching a variety of tasks and skills to your dog is really what's going to make all of the difference when it comes to having a really super trained dog. But keeping up with all of the different things you should work on with your puppy as they grow and making sure that you're well prepared with all of the things you need can be a challenge sometimes. <laughs> no, Veronica! I mean, coming up with new ideas is half the battle. And as you train your dog, you wanna train them age appropriate tasks. Oh, this is cool. This is the tumble tease. I've heard about this. So you put treats in this and it's got a chamber in here that makes it a little challenging for the treats to come out. So that'll keep dogs mentally stimulated for hours. I know I could use that. But my favorite part is this super detailed training card they give you. And you get tips on exercising, grooming, teaching your puppy self-control, loose leash walking. I mean, this is a month's worth of training on here. I love how they really simplify it and walk you through the steps. It has tons of advice and ideas for things that you can work on with your dog right now. Come on! Yeah. Advanced tricks for extra credit, that's new. Pupbox is the only subscription box that I'm aware of that actually takes your dog's age into account every month. They send you high quality training supplies. They give you toys and treats that are perfect for your individual dog. If you guys want to try out Pupbox, you can get half off your first box when you use my special link, pupbox.com slash Zach. I'll have details below. Of course, just because Veronica is learning new tricks, that doesn't mean her manners are under control. We're having dinner at our new campsite. This is our campsite for tonight in Montana. Hey, Inertia. And it looks like Bree needs to do some more work on that real life leave it and teach her to not steal food. Oh my goodness, get out of there. Are you serious? No, what? Now she's stealing my food, she's stealing my wine. Are you 
Veronica just ate everything I have. Did you your food? <laughs> she tried, yeah. We clearly have a lot more training to do with Veronica. Fortunately, one area of socialization we have totally covered is play with other dogs. And Nurse has been helping us out with that one and showing Veronica it's totally fine to put her entire head inside of a nurse's mouth. Subscribe to see it all and follow us on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Get half off your first pup box at pupbox.com slash Zach. And for a super concise, detailed walkthrough of how to train your dog, all of the basics and more, get a copy of both of my books.